America gets its own trucker convoy. The CDC lowers standards for children. And Russia invades Ukraine. And more on this week's headlines. Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. A group of truckers and other protesters in California began a cross-country trip to Washington, D.C. this week. They're calling themselves the People's Convoy, and they're protesting the declaration of a national emergency over COVID, which President Biden recently extended. The People's Convoy says they're working with local authorities along the way in order to ensure a 100% safe, lawful, and peaceful journey. Of course, since they're starting in California, I'm not sure how 100% peaceful that journey is going to be for them. L.A. traffic is enough to give even Mr. Rogers murderous road rage. Also, it's worth noting the mandates these truckers are protesting have already been lifted or are in the process of being lifted in most states. Chicago officials announced they may soon end proof of vaccination requirements in the city, which is a relief for many since most would agree that enough people have already been shot up in Chicago. And the vast majority of states have already ended mask mandates. Even Los Angeles is predicting mask mandates will be lifted by the end of March. And the trucker's destination, Washington, D.C., ends their mask mandate March 1st, four days before the convoy is expected to arrive on March 5th, L.A. traffic permitting. Although, to be clear, the People's Convoy is not planning to actually enter Washington, D.C. According to their press release, they will terminate in the vicinity of the D.C. area, but will not be going into D.C. proper. Which is probably a good idea, given that Washington, D.C. is preparing for possible protests by mobilizing the National Guard to help with traffic control. Meanwhile, Hawaii and Puerto Rico are the only areas that have no end date for their mask mandates. So instead of D.C., the truckers should head to Hawaii and Puerto Rico, although they're a little harder to drive to. On Monday, Donald Trump launched his own social media app called Truth Social. Trump is hoping his app will rival Twitter, which banned him just over a year ago, along with Facebook and YouTube. Truth Social was the number one free app available upon its launch in the Apple App Store, with many being placed on a waitlist to download it. Of course, there's always the risk that Trump could also be banned by Apple. If he is, then that just means he'll have to launch his own tech company. Orange. I can already hear the slogan. When it comes to apple and orange, there's no comparison. By the way, America Uncovered and China Uncensored are now both on True Social. Texas Governor Greg Abbott called on citizens to report anyone involved in what he calls child abuse. In this case, anyone assisting transgender minors receiving elective procedures for gender transitioning. Abbott says Texas law provides criminal penalties for failure to report such child abuse. This isn't exactly accurate, though. As controversial as gender transition surgery is for minors, and it's incredibly controversial, no Texas law or court judgment has designated it as child abuse. This is similar to his move of encouraging citizens to sue anyone who receives or facilitates an abortion. It's a way of using civilians to help you fight against something you disagree with, without actually having to change any laws. It's a slippery slope to government-sanctioned vigilantism. But on the bright side, for anyone worried we live in an Orwellian state where the government sees everything we do and has total control, Governor Abbott proves that's definitely not the case, since he's essentially saying, gee, um, would you mind doing my spying for me, pretty please? More after the break. Welcome back. The CDC has lowered the standard of speech development for children. Initially, children were expected to know 50 words by 24 months old. This new standard lowers that expectation to 30 months. And hopefully this standard excludes the words baby, shark, and do-do-do-do-do-do. I'd rather kids say nothing at all than have to hear that one more time. The CDC lowered this standard based on research from the American Academy of Pediatrics, or AAP. A member of the AAP said the earlier a child is identified with a developmental delay, the better, as treatment as well as learning interventions can begin. At the same time, we don't want to cause unnecessary confusion for families or professionals. Revising the guidelines with expertise and data from clinicians in the field accomplishes these goals. So essentially they're saying children may have a developmental issue, but it gives them an extra six months just to make sure. Have you considered that maybe your kids aren't talking to you because you're super boring? 
Try getting better at conversations. And while we're lowering standards, can we also lower expectations for millennials? This way, next time your parents ask why you don't have a spouse, child, or house, you can point out that the CDC says you're totally normal and are doing just fine. But really, I'm not comfortable with lowering standards for children. If anything, we should raise standards for them. Specifically, the age when kids are expected to stop screaming on airplanes should be changed to zero months. Look, kid, my connecting flight got canceled, they charged me for a carry-on, and they lost my check baggage. If anyone should be screaming and crying, it's me. Speaking of shady airline practices, since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in March 2020, over 15,000 ghost flights have flown from the UK. Wait, ghost flights? Is this a long-awaited sequel to Snakes on a Plane? Unfortunately, no. Ghost flights are defined as flights operating at 10% or less passenger capacity. Before the pandemic began, UK airports required airlines to fill 80% of their landing slots to retain them. These requirements were suspended during the pandemic, but airlines kept flying nearly empty flights. According to the director of the Aviation Environment Federation, this is because slots at congested airports can exchange hands for millions of pounds each, so there are very strong incentives for airlines to keep using them, even when passenger demand is very low. He also added, the number of flights may be small in comparison to the overall total, but the effects on our climate add up when you consider the average short-haul flight emits between 13 to 20 tons of CO2. And Greta Thunberg chimed in saying, how dare you? And then just glared angrily at an airplane for several minutes. The news about ghost flights obviously upset many environmentalists. On the one hand, I agree that flying nearly empty flights just so airlines don't lose a plane parking space is wasteful and should be stopped immediately. But if you can guarantee that every time I'm on a flight, I'll get an entire row to myself without a shrieking baby in sight, then sorry, polar bears, your sacrifice I'm willing to make. The Supreme Court will also hear a case involving a Colorado web designer who said their religious beliefs would prevent them from creating websites for same-sex couples. The web designer, Lori Smith, wants to expand her business to creating wedding websites, but posting a notice on her site about her religious beliefs would be in violation of Colorado anti-discrimination laws. The Supreme Court said they would only look at the First Amendment ramifications of this case and whether compelling an artist to take work violates their constitutional rights. The Attorney General of Colorado said companies cannot turn away LGBT customers just because of who they are. While Smith's attorney said, Colorado has weaponized its law to silence speech it disagrees with, to compel speech it approves of, and to punish anyone who dares to dissent. It's a complex argument. On the one hand, forcing someone to go against their deeply held beliefs is wrong. On the other hand, discriminating against a group of people just because of who they are is also wrong, assuming they're not furries. This case is expected to be heard in the fall, and I can see only one solution that will satisfy all parties involved. Wedding websites, regardless of the sexual orientation of those getting married, should all be banned. Because forget same-sex marriages, this level of egomaniacal narcissism is something every religion and belief system should be against. And after the break, Russia invades Ukraine. Welcome back. Hey, remember last week when Russian President Vladimir Putin said he was pulling his troops away from the Ukrainian border and he wanted to do everything he could to avoid war? Well. Putin ordered troops into eastern Ukraine this week and declared war. I know this is shocking. I can't believe that Vladimir Putin, who spent years working as a KGB spy, is untrustworthy. What next? You're going to tell me I can't trust Bill Cosby to order me a drink? Before invading, Putin said this conflict could have been ended if Ukraine recognized Russia as sovereign over Crimea, agreed not to join NATO, and demilitarized. So basically, his demands were, let us stomp all over you and don't do anything to defend yourself. Sure, that seems fair. I'm surprised Ukraine didn't take him up on that offer. After all, Putin seems like the type of guy you'd like to sit down and have a cup of tea with. If you were suicidal! Other countries were swift to take action against Russia. Economic action. President Biden announced a first wave of sanctions targeting Russian elites with close ties to Putin, as well as Russian banks, with the aim of cutting off Russia's government from Western finance. And then Biden announced even more severe sanctions after the invasion. And British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said Western allies will unite to hobble Russia's economy. 
which really upset Putin, because historically, hobbling the Russian economy is the Russian government's job. Many other nations announced trade bans and sanctions against Russia, with Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison saying they're behaving like thugs and bullies, and they should be called out as thugs and bullies. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz announced the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline connecting Germany to Russia would halt production, saying, now it's up to the international community to react to this one-sided, incomprehensible, and unjustified action by the Russian president, and send a clear signal to Moscow that such action won't remain without consequences. But as of this recording on Friday, the U.S. and Europe have decided for now not to cut Russia off from the SWIFT international payment system, saying they would keep that on the table as a nuclear option. Cutting Russia off from SWIFT would essentially cut them off from international financial markets. While the U.K. is pushing for it, other European countries, like Germany, aren't so keen. Although I'm not sure keeping it in reserve as a nuclear option is the best idea, because Putin is also talking about a nuclear option, and his version isn't about banking. But the biggest blow to Russia didn't come from foreign governments, it came from Eurovision. Yes, Russia has been banned from competing in the annual European Song Contest. I know this doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is to Europeans. And I know you might be thinking, I don't live anywhere near Europe, how does this affect me? Other than watching Russia invade another country and possibly set off World War III. This conflict could push already decades high inflation even higher as oil might soon reach $120 a barrel, an invasion that causes oil prices to shoot up. Somewhere, George W. Bush is smiling and saying, this time, it wasn't me. And besides oil, this conflict is causing the cost of gold and aluminum to surge, and all this inflation could wreak havoc on the stock market. Then again, it feels like these days anything wreaks havoc on the stock market. They should update the definition of the butterfly effect to show that when a butterfly half the world away flaps its wings, Wall Street takes a hit. At least there's a good reason for it this time. Just before the invasion, the Ukrainian president declared a state of emergency and granted citizens the right to bear arms in an attempt to bolster their defenses. At the time of this recording on Friday, several soldiers and civilians have been killed in the assault on Ukrainian cities. And Ukrainian troops were fighting Russian soldiers on the outskirts of the capital, Kiev. Wait, a state of emergency has been declared and they need ordinary citizens to take up arms in defense? There's only one group that can put an end to this. The People's Convoy. These truckers should head straight to Ukraine. Although it is a little harder to drive to. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.